Remember some of the older Bougainvilleas, the Barbara Karst, uh, Jamaica White, the Sundown, the Convent. Uh, these are some of the older Bougainvillea varieties that pay attention to how long or how short the days are. And they bloom when the days are short and the nights are long, which means they bloom beautifully in the spring, do nothing in the summer, and then bloom beautifully in the fall. And typically people will plant Barbara Karst Midsummer, they're really discouraged because it has no flowers on it, and they try about 10 different things trying to make it bloom. And guess what? About October, it comes into full bloom, and they give all the credit for whatever the last thing they did was. But the only thing that changed is the days got short, so now it decided to bloom. The newer varieties of Bougainvillea, and I think I can say that everything we have here, are the group that we call day-neutral Bougainvilleas. They don't pay any attention. They don't measure how long or how short the days are, and that's why you can have a plant that looks like this in the middle of the summer. So if you're going to plant, come on in if you like. If you're going to plant uh, bougainvilleas, be sure that you're planting the day-neutral varieties because they will be very spectacular in a sunny landscape. This is a plant that I think is one of the most underused of all tropicals. This plant is called Ixora, I-X-O-R-A. And it's not unusual for it to look like this all summer long. You look at these little individual clusters, what are there, maybe close to a hundred flowers coming out in a cluster. So it's not unusual to have a thousand flowers on a small plant. These things come yellow, they come orange, they come pink, some of them are a little bit taller than others. And they are relatively cold hardy. I'd protect them if it was going to get below the mid-20s. But again, things like that, if you plant them as an annual out in the sun, they give you so much color that I think they're worth it. How large does it get? Gets, most varieties will get about 36 inches. 36 to 42 inches would be the maximum height. Should you put that in, in the ground? You can if you like. Or you can put it in a pot. Either way. Either way. Either way. The uh, mallows, and we just didn't bring everything in, mallow hibiscus are another thing that are just really starting to get spectacular right now. If you want to have your neighbors, you know, wonder what you planted in the yard, and come up and knock on your door and ask, plant a mallow hibiscus. Most of you all have heard me say that one of the few intelligent things that Steve George ever said back when he was our county agent was that you can tell the really successful landscapes by the number of tire marks on the curb where people have run off the road <laughs> trying to see what it was that you planted over there. Mallows are one of those things that can create tire marks because the flowers can easily be dinner plate size, and that's just not really an exaggeration. It's not at all unusual to see those things with flowers that are eight inches or larger, and they love the full hot sun. So take a look at mallows if you want something that will really turn heads. Um, among the blooming shrubs, probably the two showiest flowering woody type shrubs, crepe myrtles of course are one. If you're going to be successful with crepe myrtles, do choose the newer varieties. Uh, you'll hear terms like mildew resistant. I don't pay much attention to that because none of them are mildew proof. And if you've got your crepe myrtles out in the sun where they should be, mildew is not going to be a problem. Good sun, good air circulation. That's the key to not having mildew problems. But the newer varieties of crepe myrtles start blooming much earlier in the season. And you'll see, you know, looking right out here, I'm right hidden. I'm sorry. You'll see uh, crepe myrtles in full bloom right now. You drive around town. In fact, Roberta was telling me, I don't know where she was driving it yesterday, but she said, it's so interesting because looking in one yard, here's this crepe myrtle. It's a solid mass of flowers, and right next to it is a crepe myrtle with no blooms on it whatsoever. What's the difference? Newer variety that blooms earlier. Older variety, come to August, that plant will be pretty, but I'm not real patient. I like to go to Wyoming in August. I want something that starts blooming early and blooms all summer long, so the newer varieties of crepe myrtles will do a much better job for you. Which variety is that? That crepe myrtle? Which, the oh, the one that's up here? Yeah. I have no idea. It was on the property when we bought the property. It is very similar to uh, one called Tuscarora. Tuscarora has a, sometimes a little bit more salmon cast to it, but I will never try to identify one from Bloom alone. Yes, sir. Are the Indian named hybrids among the newer? Yes. I think all the Indian named hybrids, the, yeah, I can't think of any of the, of the Indian names that really are not among the ones that start blooming fairly early. Is there another question? The fertilizer you put on. 
Fertilizer, we use the same thing we use uh, on the yard in general, which is that Medina granular. Now on blooming plants, if you'll add a little bit of what we call the color essentials, and this comes in bigger bags too, this really, really works well on flowering plants. But again, um, plants need a fair amount of nutrition just to grow. And even though I think this is the best fertilizer in the world for flowering plants, I don't recommend using it all the time. We'll use this twice and then use Medina once. Then use this twice, use Medina once. Or else we'll just mix the two of them together. So if you want to really be successful, use this on your flowering plants, but don't use you know just that one fertilizer. I love the Medina because of that micronized green sand they put in it. Um, just keeps things greener as well as keeps things growing well. Uh, I will tell you that the state chemist has now approved our formulation and approved the label for the new fertilizer that we will have. We'll certainly have it in hopefully by fall, well hopefully we'll have it by midsummer, but uh, later on in the fall. And uh, we'll probably keep on carrying this regular Medina growing green, but what we've done, as we tend to do when we find a product we really love, we go back to the people that make it and say, how could we make it better? Which is what we did with the man that owns Medina, Stuart Frankie, and said, how can we make it better? And I don't remember what he told us, but he told us two or three things that we could add that would make it a better fertilizer. Well, we're going to call it landscape essential. So come fall, if you don't see a bunch of this Medina around, doesn't mean it's not a good fertilizer. It means that we took the Medina, added a few more things to it, and just put our name on it. It should be the same price. Yes, How no, often? Called Medina Plus. Now, Medina Plus is a totally different product. Okay. Uh, Medina Plus is not a fertilizer at all. Medina um, makes, in fact, the thing they started and built their company around was called Soil Activator. And the ag agents hated it because they couldn't explain why it worked. So, because, you know, it didn't follow into the usual chemical formulas, you couldn't identify any one thing in it, but, uh, and it was a combination of a lot of weird stuff, but what it did is it greatly increased microbial activity in the soil, it softened the soil, and farmers were getting real good results using it, and A&M and the Extension Service was refusing to acknowledge it because they couldn't say why it was working so well. Well, Medina took that product and started adding liquid seaweed to it. Liquid seaweed has just turned out to be one of the greatest products for plant growth that's ever come along. And I think I've probably told you why several times before. But they uh, took their Medina soil activator, added liquid seaweed to it, and called it Medina Plus. So it's not a fertilizer. It enhances microbial activity and provides, think of it as some micronutrients to the soil. But Medina Plus is totally different from the from the has to grow or the other or the other products. Even the people making the deer repellents now, Liquid Fence is putting seaweed in it because it makes the plants look so much better. Bob X is putting seaweed in it because it makes the plants you spray it on look better. Uh, liquid seaweed is just really neat stuff. Okay, um, so we're talking about crepe myrtles is one of the two big woody shrubs that flower in the summer months. The other one that I like very much, but uh, you do need to take good care of it, the so-called Altheans, or hardy hibiscus, hibiscus syriacus is their botanical name. The Altheas are deciduous like the crepe myrtles are, and they produce the big hibiscus-like flowers. They're extremely cold hardy. Uh, where my mom's house is in East Tennessee, you know, it gets to 10, 15 below zero, and she has huge Altheas along the front of the house. Um, the only problem with Althea is, well, two problems. There are not a lot of colors. They're basically white. There's one out that's called Blue. Uh, Bluebird is the name of it. I'm not convinced on how good a plant it's going to be, so I'm not going to recommend it. It's just foolproof. Uh, there's another one that's white with a bright rose red center, which is gorgeous. There's a pink one. There's a lavender one. There's several double forms. There's a double one that's kind of pink and darker pink that's sort of a peppermint. Anyway, Altheas can be beautiful plants. They are susceptible to cottony root rot because they are in the cotton family. So if you're going to plant an Althea, be sure that you plant it in an area that gets good drainage and be at least a little bit careful with your watering. Like I recommend with every landscape plant, dig the hole, fill it with water, see how quickly the water drains out. If you don't have it all drained out within a few hours. Don't plant out the as gorgeous as they are. They'll end up cottony root rot and die if they stay too wet. But those are two big blooming shrubs that I think are a great part 
of any sunny landscape. Now, shrubs that grow and freeze back, and I'm not even going to try to pull it out, but this has become a very common plant around this part of South Texas. Uh, common name is Esperanza. Botanical name is Tacoma Stands. But it... Uh,